Helen List, and I'm the president and CEO at the Moffitt Cancer Center, and I'd like to welcome all of you to our 14th annual Moffitt Day here at the Capitol. And you'll see uh, there's a lot of activity going on here, Moffitt-related activity today, and we began with the arrival of our Cure on Wheels team. So we had 31 cyclers that left on Sunday morning from Tampa, rode 325 miles to get here today, uh, raising money for research, uh, cancer research at, at Moffitt. So I want to thank all of the uh, Cure on Wheels team members. You see a number of them here in the audience with their shirts on. <laughs> also, we have more than 50 Speak Out for Moffitt uh, advocates here today. Uh, so these are patients, caregivers, family members, community leaders, all of those that had some experience or relationship with Moffitt, and they're here to share their own story, their own personal story about their relationship with Moffitt. Uh, they got up very early today uh, for a, a bus ride up here beginning at 6 a.m. this morning, and I want to thank all of them for joining us as well. So Moffitt Day is very important to us because it, it really it highlights a very important public health issue, and that's cancer. Cancer uh, is the second leading cause of death here in Florida, and Florida ranks number two in the nation as it relates to cancer incidents and burden. The state legislature you know, began and established Moffitt over 32 years ago uh, with the intention to help us make strides in the prevention and cure of cancer and make sure that all the citizens of Florida had access to world-class cancer care in their backyard. And we've made tremendous advances in the fight against cancer since that time. Uh, including the development of some new drug therapies, some personalized approaches to cancer therapy, uh, as well as breakthroughs in immunotherapy, which has been the biggest uh, uh, explosion in the last decade uh, in, cancer, in cancer research. And taking our own immune system and allowing it to re-recognize cancer and eradicate it. And it's that kind of cutting edge research that really has got us noticed nationally and internationally as well. We're recognized as one of the top cancer hospitals in the United States. And U.S. News and World Report ranks us as the number one can cancer hospital in Florida and number one in the southeastern United States. And we are the only Florida-based cancer center to be recognized as a comprehensive cancer center uh, by the National Cancer Institute. And I can tell you, we would not be here today with that kind of national pro uh, prominence without the support of the state. We created state statute, began with funding from the state to, to build the hospital, and with their support, we've been able to continue our research and get to the point where we are right now. This year, more than 130,000 Floridians will see, receive a diagnosis of cancer, and many will seek out care at Moffitt for their treatment. Our volumes have increased dramatically, over 30 uh, percent in the last five years alone. In order for us to keep Keep up with the Florida's aging population and our commitment to provide the best cancer care to our patients. Our facilities need to expand. And our growing pains don't just stop on the clinical side. We also are in dire need of a space on the research side as well. We've recruited the best and the brightest scientists to, to do research at Moffitt and fulfill our mission, and we need more space for that. Recruits like a physician scientist, Dr. Brian Cerniecki, who's working on a vaccine approach to, for therapy for breast cancer, where he's able to help the patient's own immune system recognize the cancer to eradicate it. And we are quickly running out of laboratory space for our researchers. We have need for a, a brand new hospital. We also have a need for a research uh, tower as well. So today, while we're here speaking, uh, speaking out for Moffitt and all of our volunteers and Moffitt team members, we'll be meeting with the lawmakers asking that same question, can you continue to support us? We need the legislature's support and their investment for us to continue our mission to be able to accommodate the citizens of Florida. So cancer is a disease that has impacted nearly all of us uh, in some way. We can all say we know someone who's battled the disease or had a family member who's dealt with it as well. And one person who knows all too well how a cancer diagnosis can impact a family is our chief financial officer for Florida, Jimmy Petronas. He's going to say a few words and tell his story and his wife Katie's story as well. Jimmy. Thank you, Dr. List. I, uh, I'm going to try to 
find other things to be distracting so I can hold it together. Um, but I think I'll start off by just asking all the, the, uh, the cure on wheels. Could y'all come up here a minute? Have y'all seen the outfits they're wearing? Y'all like come parade through here a second. Check these guys out. Isn't this great? I bet you y'all had a lot of fun. <laughs> I don't know if you, by, by the look of this group, I don't know if they had to twist your arm to do this or not. But uh, you get a picture of this? Oh. Thank y'all. Um, but look, thank you for joining me here on this 14th annual Moffitt Day at the Florida Capitol. Um, uh, my name is Jimmy Petronas. I get to have the, the honor of being the state's chief financial officer. But uh, look, not only does Moffitt lead the nation in research and development, but it's also leading the forefront for finding a cure. In 2018, my family's foundation was rocked. By my wife's diagnosis of breast cancer. And it was a punch in the gut. Cancer, it's an ugly word. Not to me not to my family, but you wonder whose lives will impact. You never think it's gonna impact yours, but it did. But I'm here to tell you with hope and prayer, you hope it never impacts a loved one that affects you, but it might. When you hear the ugly word come out of a doctor's mouth, the thoughts that come to your mind, for me, I thought about the love of my wife and sharing the life we'd built together. I thought about my two little boys, Johnny and Theo. I thought about the future that you're hoping to have with them. But there's good news. Rest assured that some of the finest cancer treatments available in the world are right here in our own backyard. I feel incredibly fortunate that Moffitt Cancer Center was available to both me and my family. I can't thank you enough for the amazing work that you do every single day. Cancer has reminded me to stop taking life for granted and to make sure you live every moment because tomorrow is never promised. But before I continue, I want to personally thank the support that Moffat has provided to me and my family and what they've done to fight for so many lives. Now I'm gonna get serious about what I'm focused on this year. So when it comes to cancer with our firefighters, 70% of the end line of death duties are cancer related. Our firefighters right now have a 15% chance, higher probability of contracting cancer than anybody else in this room. Those numbers are unacceptable. As we are fighting for our firefighters, we've embraced better practices that have helped hopefully lower the, the likely reoccurrence of cancer in their profession. As I have watched my wife's fight, and I understand what those families are going through as their loved ones are fighting with this deadly disease, knowing that we have the ability to make a difference is exactly what is bringing us to, together today, is making a difference and ensuring we're doing everything possible to lower the risk of cancer amongst our firefighters. So there's a, there's, a, there's a fellow, he's 38 years old. He was here yesterday by the name of Dwayne McKeever. And uh, this was, Dwayne's a patient at Moffitt. And Dwayne, um, I'm, I'm on the job about a year ago and you know, it's a big deal. I'm a CFO of the state, I'm a state fire marshal. I, I'm walking into every room, you know, and people are treating me with a lot of respect and regard and I have a meal with this guy uh, in, at the fire station down in Sarasota. And next thing I know, he starts to tell me about his fight with cancer. So for the next 15 minutes, I'm sitting there crying with him as I see this 38 year old man who's a father of three children who's going in for colon cancer on December 15th of last year of 2017. And uh, not knowing that, that I was gonna be calling Twain on behalf of my wife. So um, 
Needless to say, uh, Dwayne is why this issue is important to me. He was up here yesterday. We had a bill, Anna Tara Flores is carrying in the Senate. It was passed out its first committee of reference, passed out unanimously. And as we'll continue to push that forward, Dwayne is to me the face of what we're gonna do for our firefighters. He is the face of courage. He's the face of, of, of not being afraid to speak out and to bring to light this deadly disease and the support that we should be doing at Assistance. Our firefighters, are there 24-7, 365 to create the communities that we live in. You can't create jobs, you can't expand prosperity, you can't have a safe community without a stable, robust safety net of first responders working in the background. And yeah. yeah. So we partnered with the University of Miami, we created these decontamination kits. and. Being a Florida State graduate, these god-awful green buckets are something that we've, we've, developed, we've passed out to 400 fire stations, over 4,000 of these, and it's a different approach to cleanliness as they're decontaminating their equipment after getting done saving somebody's life. So as those carcinogens and those elements that are contributing factors to the percentage being higher, we've had to change the pattern, the approach, the cleanliness, and how they deal with it. So, so we're, we're not going to stop with, with this. We're advocating and we're asking our partners to help us leverage. How do we get more buckets out? How do we change the culture of our fire sciences and our services to pre uh, prevent this number from growing higher? So we're looking for innovative ways, but it's time for everybody to step up, including the legislature, as we embrace this, this cancer benefit for our first responders. But the research is being done, progress is being made. It's a, it's a, real, uh, it's a real honor just to get through this speech knowing I'm not gonna say any other lines that are gonna make me cry. So uh, I um, spoke too soon. <laughs> so uh, I wanna introduce y'all to uh, my best friend and uh, the person who is stood by me through everything that matters to me in life, my, my wife, Katie. Thank you for allowing me to be here today. The 14th annual Moffitt Day at the Florida Capitol is a celebration of all that has been achieved in the fight against cancer, and I'm proud to be here. As you just heard, my name is Katie Patronis, and my husband Jimmy is Florida's Chief Financial Officer. I'm a wife, a mother, a daughter, a businesswoman, and a patient at Moffitt Cancer Center. Last year, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. On October 10th, I went into Moffitt to undergo breast cancer surgery. On that day, while Hurricane Michael ripped apart our hometown, my family was by my side in Tampa with absolutely no idea what life was going to throw our way. I believe that was fate. While we were facing our own challenges, I'm thankful that my family was away from Hurricane Michael and the destruction of the storm. Oddly enough, there were many blessings that day in Tampa. Thankfully, my best friend Mary was taking care of our two boys. As Jimmy waited anxiously for me in the hospital, I'm appreciative that former Attorney General Pam Bondi sat by his side in the waiting room. Moffitt Cancer Center takes a patient and family-centered approach to cancer treatment. They focused on my comfort, and I felt at ease immediately. I can personally attest to the quality of care I received. They made me feel like a priority, not just a number. I deeply benefited from the extensive experience my doctors have within the breast oncology program. As a patient, I can tell you this, the emotions you go through at diagnosis are overwhelming. I felt safe knowing my doctor specializes exclusively in breast cancer treatment. There is no place I'd rather be for my treatment than with the great team at Moffitt. I'm eternally grateful to Dr. Sarniki and the nurses that cared for me and my family during this time. Thank you. I'll turn it back over to Dr. West. I think we had two firefighters here from the Cure on Wheels today. Can, uh, can we see who that is?
Well, I want to thank Katie and uh, CFO Patronas for sharing their story today. And uh, we hope that uh, they'll be back on their feet doing very well in the future. So apparently uh, people can't hear me very well. Uh, I also want to thank you for all of your support. It's been great. And for everybody that's here today, our Cure on Wheels team, as well as our Speak Out for Moffitt volunteers. Uh, thank you. We couldn't do this without you.